All right, welcome back everybody. Anybody that's new here, thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna do this really quick. We are gonna talk about some perch today, uh, specifically Mississippi River perch. Let me show you an example real quick. That feels better. <laughs> okay so as you guys can see i was out slaying those perch if you guys haven't seen that video i'll put it at the end of this one um but the perch on the mississippi river are just something that i've always wanted to do and i figured why what a better time than right now to like explain to you guys how to go by finding them and like the easiest ways to catching them. I'll even show you my little simple perch rig. It seems very simple, but a lot of people overthink this stuff. Um, sometimes they go too big, too, too small, but um, like you've seen in the video, uh, the I was fishing right over the side of the boat. Um, I was fishing with Lance from Angler X and he had the boat on spot lock. Now, I wanna talk you guys through all of the things that lead up to actually getting on perch and like getting a limit of fish. Um, the, the number one thing really early season. So February, March, uh, if it's still cold all the way to April. So usually the month of March is when you're uh, targeting these fish. One of the biggest things that you want to make sure that you do is find the warmest water, the earliest in the day. So, uh, simply put, this is stuff that I take for granted because I've been doing this a very long time. Uh, but some people might be new to this. Some people might not even consider this and they just stumble on fish and think, whatever, you know, I, I catch fish, it doesn't matter. But the first thing in the morning is the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west, right? So if you have a river and there's trees, if the sun rises over here, that light beam is going to hit this shoreline first. So you're literally fishing the west shore because the sun is rising in the east and it's heating up the ground on the west shore the fastest. So that's step one. You have to find the warmest water. Step two, perch are actually not like a river species. Um, they're not like walleye. They're not northern pike. They're, they don't, they're not used to swimming in current. Per se. Um, the Mississippi River perch have figured out how to swim in current, but it's not that, the, like, as a perch, they are not something that you actually would see swimming in current on a regular basis. So, one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to find slack water. And the, the trick here is not finding complete dead water. So stuff that has zero oxygen uh, early in the season. If there's not a bunch of rainfall, the water's not flowing super hard. Um, if you find super slack water, there's actually lower oxygen uh, numbers in that. And the fish still need their oxygenated water. So being by a dam, a uh, set of rapids, something is going to make a big difference compared to like just having some backwater action. It does happen when you're fishing backwater sloughs and stuff like that through the ice, uh, but those fish will tend to move somewhere where there's bait access by uh, nearby and looking for like that oxygenated water to kind of like wake them up for the season and get them ready for the spawn. Uh, one of the things that I look for and what we did in the video that I'm going to put at the end of this one, uh, so when I was just out there, is I was specifically looking for wing dams. Uh, Lance has taught me a lot about how the Army Corps of Engineers built all these wing dams. I am a natural river fisherman. I grew up living on natural rivers. So I understand like riffles and wing dams from like nature. So like a pile of rocks creates a wing dam off of one side and you will fish the downside of that usually uh, for the slack water. But what a lot of people don't understand is uh, I'm going to try and just, so water's flowing this way. Normally you're here. So this is dead water. But what a lot of people don't understand is the water in front of the, the wing dam is actually slowing down in order to go around it or go over it. So like physics is the way you have to look at this. And by having that water bunch up right here, it'll actually circulate and warm up itself 
And that flat can be where fish will load up. And perch specifically will be right there, piled up, usually somewhere in that flat range, um, looking for food to do the same thing and you know, vice versa or whatever, everything, what they're trying to do, their spawning flats, all that stuff. Because like I said, perch aren't really a river species. They are a lake species that ended up in rivers and the Mississippi has so many little lakes, backwaters, that they succeed are succeeded so well in spawning that they're like everywhere from the beginning of the Mississippi all the way down to like, I think lower Iowa or even Illinois, you can still get perch in the river system. Um, but this is for like that whole stretch. Anywhere you find a riffle or a wing dam, um, you're going to be able to check either in front of it or behind it for that slack water. And like I said, you're looking for early season perch, you're looking for that warmest water, and you're looking for uh, very little movement in the water. Hence why in the video you've seen, and the one that I'm going to post at the end of this one, uh, you're basically looking for a spot where you can use your spot lock, or if you just have an anchor, uh, you'll anchor just up from that, so that uh, when you're fishing, you're fishing over the side of the boat. Uh, I'm going to show you exactly what I used. Like I said, it's very simple, but a lot of people overthink this. Okay, I don't have a lot of room in here, but I'm going to just show you the rig that I was using, which this is something that a lot of people, it's just, it's one of those goofy things. A lot of people will overthink this. Two split shots about eight to 10 inches up the line from about a number, I think that's like a number 12 treble hook. And this used to be like a glow chartreuse treble, but it got chewed up, so there's no more paint left on it. Um, but simply put, these allow you to drop the bait down near the bottom. And I don't know if you guys noticed that, if you want to go back in uh, the video here, but I was lifting slightly. So what I was doing is I was putting this on the bottom and lifting this slightly. And what that does is the current takes that minnow and throws it around in, you know, about a four inch circle downrange and because of that perch are normally sitting on the bottom they're just like walleye they're the same family and they'll be sitting on the bottom looking up to feed so with this bouncing off the bottom and going up it can go right in front of them and they'll watch it go up and that's when they're hitting it uh so like i said you if you see the clip there you see me do the little lift and it's because they probably watched the minnow hit them in front, hit in front of them. And I lift it a little bit further than it normally would be, you know, a couple inches off the bottom. And then I hold it there. And then that minnow is above their head and they do the nature thing where they strike up and eat it. They're almost like a crappie, I guess, in the sense you could say, but they're not. Uh, they will literally pick stuff up right off the bottom if you put like a worm in a jig or something like that when it's warmer out. But for spawning, this is, or for the early season, this is the one you want. It's just a simple little thing. A lot of people use a gold hook and then uh, rosy red minnows are the, the, the big, big thing. And then the rod and reel setup that I was using um, that I really love for this kind of stuff is my tuned up customs. This is an apex elite. Uh, I believe this is, yeah, this is my seven two. Uh, this is a medium light fast action. So it's got a nice backbone to it. It's got a pretty quick tip. Um, I'm running, this is my Revo S uh 220 so it's a 2000 series uh they actually they actually don't make this anymore um if if i remember right they switched it if i can find the reel that matches this i will put it in the description below but uh one cool thing is if you guys decide to order one of these rods which i can tell you right now so this is custom i have it set up i don't know if you guys will be able to see all these so these little lines are all measurements i did from the end of this cork here so you have 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so those are like my panfish lines and then if it's over 15 walleye and then i skipped these ones i went to 18 19 20 because there's some uh, walleye regulations in the state of wisconsin that i live in that that has to be underneath 20 so between 15 and 20 Kind of makes it easier for me and then there's some regulations where it's like three over 18 so that's why i have this one colored that way and then i believe it was like i have 25 26 27 28 29 30 that's in case i get trophy walleye while i'm out jigging uh which i mean if you have just a jig and a minnow you have the option of catching those giants but 
long story short, you can use the code DWS10, save yourself 10% on all orders when you order from tunedupcustoms.com. Like I said, I'll link everything in the description. I have everything I ever use in videos linked in the description. So if you guys ever want to help out the channel or get yourself some of the stuff that I use, you can do that. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I kept it really simple and like super to the point. Stay in the warmest water when you're fishing for a perch early season like this in the spring. Uh, like I said, watch for where the sun is rising and see where the sun hits the water first. Those are the areas that you want to check out. And then on top of that, make sure you're finding slack water because perch want to relax in some kind of slack water. Uh, you may, could be above wing dams, could be below wing dams, could be uh, out on sunny flats. There's, a, there's many different places in the Mississippi. I'm still learning it, but I understand rivers and I understand perch pretty well. So the biggest thing is just find that big flat that you're trying to find them stacked up on and try uh, casting jigs and minnows. Like uh, if you've never fished for a walleye with a jig and a minnow, make cast fan cast and slowly lift and hop them back. And once you find the perch, then set up on that spot. It, it really does help to be able to move around. So if you have a trolling motor, that's gonna make it a lot easier than somebody who's got just an anchor and some and a motor. But I've been fishing that way my whole life and it takes a minute, but once you figure it out, you'll get your limited perch. So hopefully that helps some of you guys out. I wanted to get this out there and make sure you guys are doing uh, the same thing that I'm doing and having fun on the water. So like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hit that like if you do. If you're new here, subscribe. See you guys next time. What is that? Did I snag another one? Oh, hey. big perch. I got it the most. Did he? This was wrapped around this one. Oh, yep. <laughs> That's a giant. That's a big, big, yeah, big egg wagon. Probably 12 even. Please stop, I'll put you back, I promise. Yeah, maybe 12 and a quarter. Big. Go make more jumbos.